everyone, and welcome to this mini lecture on Frederick Douglass and his work, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Doug Douglass, an American Slave. So Frederick Douglass is a very well-known, uh, one of the well-known authors to write a, what we refer to as a slave narrative. Uh, often slave narratives in the early half of the 1800s, that is prior to the Civil War, were used as rallying cries for the abolition of slavery. Uh, and Douglass grows to be one of the most famous voices for the ways in which he escaped, the ways in which he you know, his experience as a slave and then his experience after being a slave and how he rose up uh, and how he really became a great writer, activist, and orator around issues of slavery and eventually, you know, a, a wide variety of issues around human uh, justice or injustice. So he comes back to that experience as a slave and the ways in which it influenced him um, several times beyond the, the narrative life of Frederick Douglass. So of course that, that was written in 1845 and it gains a lot of appeal. He in fact, uh, one of the more popular writers or one of the more popular abolition, abolitionists of the time, uh, William Garrison, who is publishing who is publishing the liberator up here in actually new england and i believe in gloucester if i remember correctly uh, he really takes to douglas and he does a lot to promote douglas but douglas comes back almost a decade later to write my bondage and my freedom and then after the civil war he writes life and times of frederick douglas so these are three different memoirs or autobiographical writings that douglas uses to continue to have this conversation around slavery his experience in the world at large and his story is a very compelling story for lots of different reasons the ways in which he stood up the ways in which he taught himself to read and write in the ways in which he used that to leverage uh, leverages freedom. Uh, people don't always know this, but in fact, Frederick Douglass did talk in Lynn, Massachusetts, uh, and there is the Lynn Museum, which uh, every year, or at least for a few years now, has been holding a, uh, a, a event where people get up and read passages, and kind of everybody goes in a line to read through all of the narrative life of Frederick Douglass. So, as we get into this, I just, you know, I want us to look at this piece in relation to the other autobiographical pieces that we've looked at and to really kind of see where there are similarities and, of course, where there are differences and how exactly do we want, you know, how exactly does Douglas measure or compare with the other authors that we've been, we've been talking about in this tradition of first-person narratives and autobiographies. Very early in the, the narrative, uh, well, right at the beginning, we have Douglas saying, I have no accurate knowledge of my age, never having seen any authentic record containing it. By far the larger part of the slaves know as little of their ages as horses know of theirs, and it is, it is the wish of most masters within my knowledge to keep their, their slaves thus ignorant. I do not remember to ever have met a slave who could tell of his birthday. They seldom come nearer to it than planting time, harvest time, cherry time, spring time, or fall time. A want of information concerning my own was a source of unhappiness to me even during childhood. The white children could tell their ages. I could not tell why I ought to be deprived of the same privilege. I was not allowed to make any inquiries of my master concerning it. He deemed all such inquiries on the part of a slave improper and impertinent and evidence of a restless spirit. So Douglas starts off right at the beginning saying, I cannot account for when I was born and I'm being denied my birthday. Right? That is, I, uh, you know, I, and think about within our culture how important your age is you know, in your day of birth, right? We we have birthdays, and we, we really do recognize birthdays, and we recognize certain birthdays, you know, in our culture today, we look at, you know, you're, when you turn 10 and you're double digits, when you turn 13 and you're now officially a teenager, when you turn 16 and can get your license, and sweet 16, or if you're, uh, or if you are um, of, of Latin American tradition, you have your quinceanera. Uh, when you turn 18, you're officially adult. Like, age is an important thing. And Douglas is telling us right off the bat, he is denied that. People might give him a rough estimate. Well, you know, sometime in the, these five months. 
but that you know or in these two months but he's being denied his birth um and there, there's a profound sense or he's laying out this profound sense of you know that loss that of his identity that when he asks about it he's told he's being improper he's being impertinent or he's a restless spirit and of course restless a, a slave that had a restless spirit that was largely code for a slave that needed to be whipped so right from the beginning he's reaching out to the audience and he says do you understand what it is like to have never known your birthday and to ask of it means you are potentially punished my father was a white man he was admitted to be such by all i ever heard speak of my parentage the opinion was also whispered that my my master was my father but of the correctness of his, this opinion i know nothing the means of knowing was withheld from me that line the means of knowing was withheld from me right and this is something that douglas comes back to time again what is being withheld from him Th those means of knowing are denied him because he is a slave and therefore is not seen as equal is not seen as a human even though as anybody reading this recognizes he is human he's very human he's extremely he's a very profound human my mother and i were separated when i was but an infant before i knew her as my mother it is a common custom in the part of maryland for which i ran away to part children from their mothers at a very early age frequently before the child has reached its twelfth month its mother is taken from it and hired out on some farm a considerable distance off and the child is placed under the care of an old woman too old for field labor for what this separation is done i do not know unless it is to hinder the development of the child's affection towards its mother and to blunt and destroy the natural affection of the mother for the child this is an inevitable result so we see this generations of children stripped from their parents for because they are not allowed to foster those relations that slave owners saw this as a threat to the their you know to their livestock which is how the slave the slaves were per perceived and so he's talking about one of the the first times he witnesses something that you know he witnesses a whipping i was so terrified and horror stricken at the sight that i bid myself i hid myself in a closet and dared not venture out till long after the bloody transaction was over i expected it would be my turn next it was all new to me i had never seen anything like it before i had always lived with my grandmother on the outskirts of the plantation where she was put to raise the children of the younger women i had therefore been until now out of the way of the bloody scenes that often occurred on the plantation so here again we think about here's this child's first exposure to the violence that is daily life for slaves and we have to think about Douglas is trying to convince his readership of what slavery really is what it looks like what happens how people experience it how him an edge an intelligent person was victim to it and exposed to it in some very painful ways right this is his if i remember correctly his aunt that's being whipped all right so this is the first just kind of some ideas and thoughts about uh frederick douglas and this narrative really try to get in there think about how he's painting you know his narrative who his audience is what he's doing to convince them that this is a worthy cause to get behind all right thank you for listening see you in the next video